This leads us to the next issue because uh, Professor Bafo Jimendria, yourself, and then all uh, that's Red uh, Digital Macro and Anoy Ninto, and also uh, Boachi Chamantin Jacon, who put out this article. And, and let me also acknowledge what Professor Raymond Atuguba, who's the dean of the University of Ghana Law School, also put out about this. And good morning to Professor Raymond Atuguba. And thank you for also writing on this matter. Uh, and that you can find a full complement of it on, on 3news.com. But draws my attention to this, that private honor should never be forced to transcend into the public space, whether it be in the determination of who the founder of the nation is or in building a cathedral. It goes on and on. Thank you very much. And a number of you also sending messages on this matter. Thank you for the many messages that have come through. This one says, good morning, Alfred. Frankly, Professor Bafag Mendia is one of my role models, but comparatively between MPP and NDC has at least made some strategic and impactful investments such as expanded our port, expanded our airport, built UGMC. I'm sure you're talking about the NDC, you say and built infrastructure such as the Accra Data Center and Mohammed from Salaga. Mohammed, thank you very much for your message. Musa Abatwa also sends us a message, says, it's important to recognize that Ghana's history cannot be manipulated to favor any narrative, especially when it comes to the legacy of Osajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Thank you very much. And this one also here says that we have to be dealing with matters that confront us today in forging our future, including the fight against corruption. And that's what leads me to my next issue. The Office of the Special Prosecutor has cleared the former president, John Rabani Mahama, from any act of corruption in the controversial Airbus bribery scandal. Now, if you recall, in 2020, the former special prosecutor, Martin Alamisi Burns Kaiser Amidu, accused John Mahama as a mysterious government official one in this scandal that trailed the procurement of aircraft from manufacturer Airbus for the government of Ghana. Let's hear from the OSP exactly what he said at that press conference, and I'll bring you aspects of this 25-page report, which will set the premise for this conversation. Take a look. That suggests that former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official was paid bribes. The OSP found no evidentiary basis. That suggests that former President John Dramani Mahama or any other public official was induced to improperly favor or did improperly favor Airbus in respect of the purchase by the government of Ghana or military transport aircraft from Airbus. Close proximity dealings by such elected high officials of the Republic and their kin and close associates on behalf of the Republic should neither be viewed favorably, favorably nor encouraged, as they give rise to reasonable suspicion of influence peddling and conflict of interest. The process between 10 February 2021 and 20 December 2021, pending the outcome of an ongoing UK investigation. In the end, the OSP had to conduct the investigation on its own, has directed the closure of the OSP investigation into alleged bribery of high-ranking Ghanaian officials by Airbus SE. The OSP would not institute criminal proceedings against any person in respect of this investigation. Says the special prosecutor will not institute criminal investigations into any aspect of this matter. Does this bring to an end this Airbus conversation? As some have suggested that this is not a close case as yet. Why is that? Martin Pebble is a private legal practitioner. He's been listening to us uh, currently out of the jurisdiction. He's joining us on Zoom. Also joining us in a bit is Adam Senan, who is the co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. But let me just run you through aspects of this report, this 25-page report by the special prosecutor, which will form the basis for this. Airbus SC allegedly promised success-based commission payments totaling approximately 5 million euros 
to an intermediary referred to as intermediary five. And the intermediary five has now been identified as Samoa Adam Mahama, described as a close relative of a high-ranking Ghanaian official referred to as government official one. Now we do know um, who the government official one is, as the OSP reveal that former president John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the NDC, is government official one, was a key decision maker in the government of Ghana's purchase of three C-295 military transport aircraft from Airbus SE. It continues that the purpose of payment, payments were allegedly intended to induce or reward improper favor from government of official one to secure the aircraft of a purchase deal. Financial transactions out of the promised 5 million euros, approximately 3.8 million was paid to intermediary five between March 2012 and February 2014. These were the key allegations. And let's look at the findings. The judicial findings in the UK court, which in fact the MPP says to the extent that the government official one is now known to be H.E. John Domani Mahama, for them vindicates the position that they took on this matter because John Romani Mahama did not like to be called the government official one. The usual findings, similar conclusions about Airbus SE's practices were reached, corrupt practices were reached by investigative and judicial authorities in the United States, notably in the case of United States of America versus Airbus SE. The OSP requested mutual legal assistance from the UK and the US authorities but received no additional evidence beyond what was publicly available through the DPS. So let's look at the involvement of the key individuals. That also paints another picture. As the OSP found now, no evidence that John Mahama was involved in or influenced the agency relationship between Airbus and its intermediaries, including his brother. The special prosecutor directed the closure of the OSP investigation into the alleged bribery involving Airbus SE, the high-ranking Ghanaian officials. The OSP will not initiate criminal proceedings against any other persons in this particular deal. Now, if you look at the other aspects of this report, covers the three airplanes acquired by Ghana from Airbus, the nation received its first C-295 aircraft in November 2011. The second aircraft was received in April 2012. And the third was received in November 2015. The UK SFO investigations found that Airbus had engaged in schemes that involved bribing its way to lucrative contracts in countries such as... And you see, the, the, this investigation did not just bother on Ghana or transactions between the government of Ghana and Airbus. If you look at the special prosecutor's report, specifically page 18, you see that countries such as Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Indonesia, and Ghana. So Airbus's involvement were investigated in all of these countries. Airbus officials, as part of the scheme to obtain and or maintain contracts with the government, either bribed or agreed to bribe intermediaries with close links to a high-ranking state official said to have influenced over the country's aircraft purchase plans between 2011 and 2015. The office has concluded investigation into the alleged bribery, a Euro European multinational aerospace corporation regarding the sale and purchase of military aircraft. In fact, if you look at the individuals as revealed now, we know the government official one, intermediary five, that's the brother of, the, of, of John Mahama, and intermediary six, who's a consultant named Philip Sean. Now, if you look at the further details, and let me at this moment also acknowledge the presence of lawyer Martin Pebu, who is joining us on Zoom right now. Council, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Key Point. Good morning, so can I see? Honey, can you hear me? I can hear you, and uh, yes, I can see okay. you as well. I hope you're well. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Quickly, let me greet uh, Garmanche as usual. 
Kentucky Tech, which will be the second. Very, very important. You know, for me, I've told you, as long as I come on this program, we have to pay tribute to Gamanche for wading into the this is the Adapa cash scandal. And then I'll say at the end of the uh, the second, Domahini. Let me greet so far, Kufu, to the Asan to our returns. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the consistent greetings, um, as you've always done. Now, if you look at the observations on by the special prosecutor on this Ebas matter, investigations found no evidence that the former president, John Mahama, was involved or played any role in the procurement and maintenance of the agency relationship between Ebas and Foster and his associates. The OSP also found no evidence that suggests that the involvement of Foster, that's the brother of John Mahama, as an intermediary of Ebas, and the direct communication and meetings between former president Mahama and officials of Ebas to close the deal amounted to any corruption and corruption-related offense. And this is where other questions have also been asked, to the extent that the OSP says it ought reasonably to have occurred to former President John Mahama, the flag bearer of the NDC and the government of Ghana, that the familiar relationship between the former president and his brother were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings. But the OSP did indicate that there was no evidentiary basis suggesting that the former president or any other public official was induced to improperly favor or did improperly favor Ebas in respect of the purchase. So uh, th th aside from the concern that the OSP raises, he also contextualizes it to the extent that that familiar relationship did not influence any processes, as stated. But I start off with you, uh, lawyer Martin Pebble, on, on this matter. Mm -hmm. Is, is this mm -hmm. an end <coughs> in this case, the verdict by the special prosecutor as put out earlier this week? Does this bring this matter to a finality? No, it doesn't. Uh, it's just that let's call it for now a truce. So, you know, matters like this, because it's criminal in nature and the OSP acknowledges it, if tomorrow they find any evidence that's incriminating, they will go back into it, except that uh, by then, if it's beyond, okay, so uh, if, if it's beyond three years, you know, under Article 57, usually you can prosecute an ex-president within three years of his leaving office. It appears uh, right now we are beyond three years. So in future, if they find evidence, yes, it has Yes, they will not be able to prosecute, but still, it would have moved our democracy forward. So for now, it's okay that the file has been closed because there is no evidence. But matters like this, this will not be the end of it because, you know, we are trying to root out corruption. So everybody has an interest in getting to the real bottom of the matter. Look, Mr. Kansi, let's, let's be very clear. So from the way the facts, uh, as you've narrated, show, it means that President Mame's brother, Foster, was paid 3.8 million euros. 3.8 million. So when they say there is no evidence connecting him, hmm, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It tells you that our criminal laws have limitations. So because, you see, uh, the report makes it clear that Airbus knew that Foster was Mame's brother. And yet they engaged him. So it just tells you that, yes, you will find a hard crime, but you also see that hmm, the suspicions will remain as a PCA they are being put in. As for the suspicions, they are not going to go away. No, no, they won't go away. And that's how come, you know, even President uh, Atta Mills uh, instituted a committee before he died to, for the committee to go into this matter to see what can happen. Unfortunately, we don't have the benefit of the committee, uh, the, the committee report. But one thing that will stay is that so Mahama himself, he has to do introspection. Now that it appears he's going to win again, he shouldn't come and repeat that nonsense. Excuse my friend. He shouldn't come and repeat that. It's his luck that we booted him out because of these matters. And Ekufuado came and, you know, just uh, disappointed us 
show that he is worse than Mama, and so he's giving Mama an opportunity to tap. But let's be very clear. It should be clear to Mama that it's not because we are so much in love with him that he's an angel. It's just his lack that the MPP is proving to be far more corrupt. But it doesn't mean that the suspicions we had about him and the rest have gone away. No. Like what he is saying, you see, I always say, if Alan had resigned earlier, far earlier, if he had separated himself from the MPP early enough, I would have been supporting Alan. But it's unfortunate. He didn't jump out of the ship early. He sat down for the ship to sink. We went to the IMF, everything. So I think Alan didn't appear credible to me any no, Zan, I'm listening to you. Sorry, I'm listening June, to you, Mr. Bobo. Anytime after June 2022, because you know, we announced that we're going to the IMF on July 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, once Alan was part of the government when we went to the IMF, that was it for him. Yeah, if Alan had resigned earlier, we would have been rooting for him. Because listen, Mr. Kansai, we have to state this very well so that. Uh, JM will know that we are not happy. Yes, it appears. Yes, it's going to come. But this thing, it can't continue. It can't continue because, look, the report makes it clear that Foster was engaged between 20, 2009 and 2015. Mm -hmm. And they knew that Foster is brother to Mahama, JM, and he was vice president at the time. So if you say you are not finding evidence of corruption, this, this, this. Look, eh, 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 we are not children. We are not children, right? And that's why OSP says that. So yes, but, uh, in the report, I also read that. Raised, I also read in the report that Airbus took, took action when they got to know the familiar relationship between the, the, the that's Foster and, and John Mahama. So, and the OSP also goes on to indicate that this familiar relationship did not influence the transaction in any way. So, where's the underlining concern? Oh, listen, listen, listen. You think this is, we are not kids who took action. They knew it from day one. Look, can we get some of the, they said they knew. They knew about the relationship. They knew about it. Let's just say, yes, you cannot get a criminal prosecution, but please, let's not push it. If we push it too far, then they begin to make us look stupid. That one will not accept it. We are not stupid. This thing is very, very tacky. It's very, very murky. It's just that um, we can't find the hard evidence, but the suspicions will remain. So please, let's not push it, because the more people try to push it like, this is sacrosanct, this is kosher, kosher, then the more we feel insulted. Let's leave it. Yes, we've seen that they say they can't find the evidence, sure. But that doesn't mean that nothing happened. The two are not the same. Yeah, but, but Council, how do we, how do we know same. if something really happened if we don't put some evidence to it and, and rather take the position that the fact that there's been stated clearly by the OSP that there's no evidence that the former president was involved in or played any role in the procurement and maintenance of the agency relationship, as the OSP has stated, you take the position that to the extent that the OSP has stated nothing happened, you, you don't think that nothing happened. Something would have happened, but then again, maybe it, it has not been captured or no evidence has been put to it as yet. But we, we speak to evidence, don't we? Yes, let's correct this. OSP can never state that nothing happened. No, I think God, that's not what they said. They said there is no evidence. There is no evidence. That's what they are saying. As so what really happened here? No. OSP can't state that. No, no, no. They can't. Nobody knows. So what really happened, that's not something that anybody can say. That's what we say. So with time, we'll get to know. But let's repeat this fact. Mm -hmm. 2009 to 2015, mm -hmm. Foster was paid uh, somewhere between 2012 and 2014. He was paid how much? 3.8 million that, uh, euros. And they knew that his brother of Mahama, and we are still going around, going around looking for something else. Oh, hey, Master, it's, it's, it's farcical, to be honest with you. Mm. This whole thing is a very farcical thing. Ah, it ain't. Charlie, 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 listen, 
this is a, let's, let's be careful the extent to which we are pushing it. It's, mm. it's looking very farcical. You pay money to the man's brother, and then you say you are looking for evidence of corruption against the man himself. Ah, why? What is that? Hmm. Why? Uh, uh, how? Look at it. You've paid money to Foster, who is GM's brother. Mm -hmm. And then you go around. Uh, we are looking for evidence of corruption against GM himself. Hey, what, what, what kind of uh, investigations are these? Both from everywhere in the US, UK, and then Ghana. What else are you looking for? That they should come and put their money in GM's hands. Oh, come on. This thing. So that's how, you see how we've been complaining from day one. This thing, but but was your mama engaged, challenge. as far as you do know, for, uh, was your mama engaged by the special prosecutor during the course of the investigation? Oh, yes. The report says it, that yes. he was... Um, interrogated so I, wise, I ask this wise, question yes. because of what you are the statement you just made that if we, if we were going around asking questions when there was a statement of an alleged bribe paid then why were we going around asking questions elsewhere when but then again in the report as you did confirm the special prosecutor engaged John Mahama on this allegation is it not yeah Yes, yes. They engaged him. So, but the thing is that the payment, oh, let's clarify this too. Please, the payment to him to foster, they'll tell you that he was working. And that's how corruption matters are. But who would take such big money without an agreement saying that he's working? But as to whether that's how much he, he would have been paid, but for his connections and etc., it's another question. Yes, but for issues of whether uh, he would have been paid such money if he wasn't the brother of Mahama and the rest. That's another question. So all I'm saying is that uh, what I don't want to accept, listen, mm -hmm. yes, JM is lucky because of Ikufuado's corruption, he and Baumia together, everything is coming. But I beg you, I don't want to be lending support to the report that this means that nothing happened. I can never do that. Even that will show that I'm being inconsistent. At mm. my age in life, reading criminal law and everything, it is corruption. We were going to look for corruption that they should put their money in GM's account or in his hands. Then we say, yes, we found corruption. This thing is really bad. It's bad. And that's how come Ata Mills wasn't happy about it and he set up the committee. But as I've said, so we want JM to understand that, listen, it's luck. Nothing has been shown. But we beg him, when he comes, distance will not allow me. I'll be leading demonstrations. If we will die, we will die. Distance has to stop. We are not stupid. Because I ask myself that, so what at all have we done to God that since this Fourth Republic, apart from at our meals, we've been inundated with corrupt Presidents, uh, apart from Ata Mills, that we all almost agree that he didn't take anything from us. The rest, oh, from Kufu, Rollins, um, come on, a Kufu, Adul, ah, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, so I'm, I'm paying that we keep on going. So please, I cannot sing hallelujah that this says nothing happened. It says we can't find evidence. Let's leave it at that. But as you say, we are watching, he will come. But if he comes, we expect to see change. His brothers, etc. Just as we are complaining today, the Kufado's family have taken over contracts here and there. When GM was in office, it was the same problem. Baumia's brothers are getting cocoa contracts. They are taking uh, scholarships and not going to school. Samira's brother took her 18,000 pounds, paid school fees, never went, never bothered to defend the cost, etc. So that is how come we are tired of Ikufuado and Baumia that they should go. So that we will see, and you know, there are more stories of corruption that you and I have heard, but we cannot get the paperwork. And so because of that, we are not allowed to say that on air. So the mm -hmm. main motivation is that we want these guys to go so that we can deal with all these corruptions. But it's not because JM is an angel. Please, uh -huh. let's draw the lines very clearly. Okay. Now, Council, if you look at page 18 of this OSP report, 
he quotes point six point six six point six. He says it also appears that Foster, that is John Muhammad's brother, and I'm reading this because of a point that you made earlier. So it also appears that Foster and his associates became involved as intermediaries in the Airbus Ghana deal after the decision by the government of Ghana in preference of the C-295 aircraft. Therefore, it seems that Foster's Airbus intermediary role at the time his brother served as a vice president of Ghana was a case of luckless coincidence that attracted the disapproval of the UK and US authorities. Is that not instructive enough? Does that, does that answer the question you ask about the extent to which John Muhammad's influence could have been considered or involved in favor of his brother? If this part of the you, this OSP report is anything to go by, this page 18, 6.6, .6, that per the OSP's own verdict, it appeared that Foster and his associates became involved in this Airbus Ghana deal after the decision of the government of Ghana in the pre preference of this C-295. So Foster's Airbus intermediary role, at the time John Muhammad was vice president, was a case of luckless coincidence. Yeah, Mr. Kansi, that's the OSP's words. I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not going to adopt those words. I stand where I stand, which is that you read the report, right? As I've said, we've not found evidence. Yes, that's the end of the matter. But we shouldn't push it that nothing happened. That's all that I've been trying to say. Because, you see, we are human beings and we are not stupid. I mean, 34 million people know. So we are saying that, listen, once money has gone into the president's brother's uh, pocket, right, mm -mm, we'll never be happy about it. No, there's no way. That's what I'm saying. Once money is gone into the president's brother's pocket, we'll never be happy about it because the suspicion and the OSP, yes, apart from what you've read, you see, he, he went on to say that, but once that money has been done, that relationship, GM should have known that to raise issues. So that's what we're also saying, because that is then to caution JM that so next time he should up the game. He should up the game. He should not be involved in the transaction. So let's come here. Uh uh this uh uh can see. Yes, the he, they say luckless coincidence. But after JM was involved in the transaction and made sure everything was going well, so you don't think that that is a help to the brothers' work. You don't think that that is. So that's why I'm saying that uh, this thing, let's not overanalyze. There are more questions we can raise. But listen, once we've said that there is no evidence of a criminal prosecution, we'll let it lie. But don't rub it in our faces. No, that, that's the one that I'm just trying to say. Let's be cautious. Let's just say there's no evidence. So we are leaving it there. But as for the fact that money went into James' brother's pocket, I think that is what is weightier than anything else. That is what is weightier than anything else. And that was the very thing we're not happy about. Those were, that's just one of those. His brothers were also getting contracts, like Baumier's brothers are getting contracts now. So sourcing, so sourcing, which Ekufuado and Gabi and Co call Kivri. Baumier's brothers are getting contracts through so sourcing, etc. So it's the same thing. So it's just a repeat of the transcript in 2016. That's how come we are saying Baumia should go. But if JM is coming, he shouldn't think that he's coming because he's innocent. He's only coming because he's lucky his opponents have proven themselves more corrupt. That's all. Hmm. Yes. That's it. And, and you, you say that such transactions of international nature do not just end like that. Yes. They are not ending like that. So in future, we'll see. So look. That's why I said, let's be careful. Let's say if we push it too far. Okay. So now, now that Foster got that money, do you know how much he will contribute to GM's campaign? Is there any law limiting him? Do you know how much he will contribute? Uh -huh. So some of those things, Charlie, you know, let's leave uh, them. If you, they say if you go too far, they, they say to collapse. But... I'm also very happy that we are showing that we are angry 
the anger in us in 2016, you see that 2024 today, it has increased. So that's why I'm happy about that anger has increased. Uh -huh. you, saw, you saw what you said that a few weeks ago with Fokujeto leading the charges, etc. You see, it's a build up. Of course, let's pay tribute to Oliver Baka Vomaro. Oliver, you've done your best. After Oliver, we all came in Kumi Preko, etc. So, what we are telling the political class is that it's not business as usual. Mm -hmm. The anger has increased. So, JM will come in December, but you'll be surprised by January, February, we'll be demonstrating all over that we are not accepting business as usual. Uh -huh. right. That's all that I want to make clear. That they should see that the climate has changed. Ghanaians are not sitting down because these are our classmates. Some are genius, some are students. Are they more intelligent? We just sit down, then they come, they take office. People who have been worked today, they are living in V8, living in bought properties, encantments, etc. Some have bought contiguous properties, three, four, etc. And they will sit down that this will continue and continue. No. I see. Well, Lama Tukpebo, thank you for, for this. And please stay with us.